might have meant that um, I'm between the knowing and the not knowing when it comes to talking about myself. Um, but as much as possible, I will try to talk about myself today. Because to talk about myself is like asking, asking the public that is overfed and then you ask that copy neither to throw up or to duplicate. So you can imagine what kind of a that you know that so the situation of that copy is kind of myself. And then the journey through my, my own life as far as this presentation is concerned, the image that comes to my mind can be compared to the life of a beautiful bird that was trying to avoid the winter wind. So the bird was flying on a terrific speed. And in between the journey, it got hit by the summer wind, the, 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 the heat of the summer wind, and it fell. And as it was gasping for life and for strength, from nowhere, a cow decided to pass by, and then the cow dropped a deposit of shit around the bed. So as that bed was right under the cow shit, and the cow was, and then the bed was on the icy land, then the temperature within the cow shit were providing the warm that the bed needed to survive. But as soon as the bed began to realize where it was, living and experiencing life under the cow shed, it began to complain. So as it began to complain, and then the whistling sound of the bird came out, and from nowhere, there was this wild mountain cat that was also passing by in search of food. So it came to the cow shed and sent the voice and began to dig around. So while digging around, the bird felt that salvation was at hand. Somebody was coming to the bridge for the council. And no more, it was also a whole meal for the bear. So before the bear could knew what was happening, the wild mountain cat ate the bear cow. What am I saying? In life, not every cow should, or not every cow that dropped a ship on you wants the bad for you, especially in all situations. And not everyone who did the cow shit around for you wants your good. And that is the image of my kind. Mm -hmm. that, there is nothing like hopeless situation for me, but there can be hopeless people in life. And I've come to this level of understanding by journey through this whole idea of karma. Now, when I talk about karma, for me, it is that which holds. My four world spreads. What do I mean by my four world spreads? My mental life, my emotional life, my physical life, and then my, uh, my, my social life. So <coughs> karma helps me, it guides me, it accompanies me, it holds that delicate balance for me to be with it every part of my life. And with that, I can tell you karmic moments in my life at least for the sake of time, some of them that will let you to know how this world four world friends have been guided over the years. My father was a teacher, my mom is a farmer. I grew up in a farming community. I was chasing bush animals without hunting for big survival. It may interest you to know that when eight children share a piece of an egg and everybody celebrates and it feels happy that the person has eaten an egg for the day, that will tell you the level of the I have passed through from the beginning. So my mom gave my own hours and the second born, the first born, my sister, my sister died. The one after me, Vivian, also died. So it was myself, my, 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 my mom and my dad. 
and that so much resembles my mom that we share many things in common. For instance, if my mother takes him as a pregnant woman, all the symptoms that a pregnant woman has to go through, my mother will not go through, but I will suffer it. My feet will, if my mother take him, my feet will swell up, I will be scattered, I have all rashes and rashes within my body. For nine months, not until my mother put to bed, I wouldn't be depleted. So that will tell you the, what I share in common with my mom. My dad, who was a teacher, also was an occasional drinker. But my mom and myself hardly agreed, but I always agree with my dad. And he taught me some life moment lessons. And how did it begin? I remember at the age of five, my mother gave me an unjustifiable beating. So out of anger, I put her up slowly my pants and went, went in search of my dad, who was teaching in the nearby town 20 miles away from our farming community. So in searching for my dad, I entered into the, into the forest and I spent seven days in the forest alone eating wild fruits at the age of seven until a hunter discovered me, took me to his hamlet, and eventually one discussion leads to the other, they found my daddy, and then they had to join my father. So that will tell you a little bit. And then the, I was going to tell that when I was six months old, there was a public conflict on land disputes about the border, who owned that piece of land. So when I was three years old, then they took me to the farm and I took the cutlass and went to the particular spot and I told my parents and the people who were there that this is where the border begins, they should dig. And when they dig, they saw a pot. Those traditional people that they might take a foot of pot, so they took the pot and so today I don't know the content of that pot. And that was a little bit mysterious about them as far as so journey through all through the primary school and all that, it was within a typical farming setting. And my world was all about bush life. Then I remember there was only one junior high school in the village. And then we had almost 6,000 kids competing to go for admission. And then my parents told me, my father said he, he, was, he needed time to teach me to go to go and sit for the entrance examination. So I defied the family orders, sneaked out, I went and took the examination among 6,000 kids, and I took the first position. So that took me, uh, made my father to become aware that I need to be put into school. So when I turned 13 years old, I was asked from the village to go to a nearby secondary school for an examination. We were 12 students, I competed with them, and then I took the first position and then I admitted me into the senior secondary school to be in top three. And imagine from the village to the city to be a senior high school at that time was a big thing. So I couldn't go. So after two semesters, they had to withdraw me back to the village to continue my family life. When I kind of went back to the junior high school, I finished went to senior high school in the village, another farming community. And life was basically farming, school, farming, school. And we had teachers. We didn't have books. There was literally nothing. So occasionally, we would do manual labor, mobile phone work, and we'd work at people's farm, get the money. Then I would travel to the city, go to any senior high school library, get students' books, copy, make the photocopies, go back to the village. Do that, that is how I managed to survive through my senior high school. And Paul B. So, we were 132 students that sat for West African Admission Council, but I was the only one who passed on my exams. And then I had admission to go to university to read law. But I wasn't exposed in life. And the decision of even going to university at that time scared me. So, and my father was happy about it, but I was afraid to go live in the city. So I decided to run away from my family when I went into the street. But I remember prior to my senior high school examination, something happened. 
the day before we began the exams, I was hiding under a bush with a student mattress, reading, and from nowhere there was a big cobra that fell on top of the tree and landed on me. And so there was a struggle and I was able to kill that cobra. The following morning, when I was supposed to write my first exams, I had this signal before shingles. That, that skin, the shingles just bowed to one side of me. So I had to enter and write all my examination with a piece of paper, a piece of cloth wrapped over me and all the papers. And that was how I survived through the whole period. That aside, when I was writing the exams, I collapsed in one, the day before the examination, I collapsed. And then by collapsing, they took me to the clinic, sustained me, I came back to write the exams. They took me back to my village. My mother, who was a strict Pentecostal lady, had traveled, and I had to be in the room for five days before my mom returned. And when they came back to find me, I was almost dead. I'm from the village, and the way they saw me, but then I was dead. So they put me at the back of the taxi taking me to the city to put me in a mob, and the whole community was in tumor and mourning. And then there's a river, one river after five miles from the village that before you cross the river with a dead body, you must call a vision. And that is the belief. So when they got to that part of the river, because they had no local germ to call, they couldn't cross it. So they had to remove my body from the floor so that the car will cross before they can take me. So they place it, it's really heavily. So they drop my body on the floor 